Hey y'all, it's Christy Cook from Tea Dottles. Um, it's time for Tutorial Tuesday. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, things that I use for knitting and crochet. Some of my favorite things to use. Um, so it's it's more of a, I guess that's kind of a tutorial. A tutorial in the things that I like to use. <laughs> uh, I am a fairly new to uh, knitting. I just learned to knit at the beginning of this year. Uh, so those items will be just things that I I have found that I've like I like as I've learned to knit. Um, some things are universal to both knit and crochet. Uh, now I have been crocheting for nearly 40 years. Uh, amazingly enough, uh, I learned to crochet when I was two years old, and I will soon be 42. So, um, yeah, let's just get into it, shall we? Uh, I've got a lot of things laid out here to share with y'all, um, and I'll just kind of go over them. I do have my computer pulled up over here so I could give you some idea of pricing on some of these things. Uh, I do shop on Amazon quite frequently for things like this. Occasionally, I will go to Etsy. It depends on what I'm looking for. Um, so let's just get into it so first I'm gonna start with some small things that we all probably carry in our little project bags or maybe just a little notions pouch um, one of my favorite things are these little foldable scissors um, I like the foldable scissors like this with the plastic handles uh, because you can fold them and keep them in your bag and not worry about poking yourself with the scissors um, great for snipping off yarn ends. I keep this pair uh, beside my thinking chair uh, in a little jar uh, so I can have it whenever I need it. Um, and I just recently realized I really need some more of these. I actually got this pair from Jimmy Bean's Crochet Club and I love them. They kind of look like little glasses. Um, but they, they work so smoothly and they're much easier on the hands. I have a pair of foldable scissors that are all metal. They fold in half and they're very hard to open and their edges are not smooth at all. So I really like these. They're great to keep in project bags to have when you need them. Um, I just noticed on, let's see, you can get a pack of four of these for $7.66 on Amazon. Now you probably can find these maybe you can find these in the Dollar Tree I don't know for sure um, I haven't checked but um, I certainly love these and I love the little notch the little opening on the end um, because you can use it with one of my other favorite things for knitting and crochet these little mini book rings um, the reason I love the book rings because they're fairly easy to open they come open like that they have a hinge and they have a little overlapping end um, they actually do fit in that little loop and then look that one's not one to close easy there it closed um, and then you can hook it to uh, like a loop or something in your bag my project bags come with the bigger ones come with D-rings and most of them come with some kind of loop ribbon loop or something and that's what they're for so you could hang it so it's not falling down in your bag and you lose it uh, you could put it on a keychain you could do whatever you want to i just like these book rings because uh, i also use them to store stitch markers and things like that uh, the little ones are just great um, and they don't take up too much room they come in a bunch of different sizes um, I ordered a 10 of them off of Amazon. Let's see how much. I forgot to pull that up. Let's see how much. Mini book rings. Doot, doot, doot. Where is the little bin? Hmm, I don't see it anymore. That's the thing about Amazon. Sometimes things are more or less. Uh, just depending I can't find them no but I know I ordered them off of Amazon so if I could find them 
I'll put the link down below there. I didn't pay very much for this big, it was a lot of them. There's like 80 to 100 or something in here. Um, so like I said, I like to keep stitch markers on them as well. I have a big one with several smaller ones and then all these stitch markers. Um, and so that's something else. I do like that actually this past year I just learned about with stitch markers I always used a piece of yarn to mark mine stitch markers are so much easier to use um, you can get them in the lever back earring which I love for um, I gotta focus oh I love lever back earrings uh, for bigger yarn um, plus, it's easier to use uh, sometimes than a lobster clasp, um, which if I use lobster clasps, I like, I typically like the bigger ones, the 16 millimeter. They work a little better. Um, I do have some of the plastic ones that come with stuff all the time, and those are good um, if you're working on something. I like the plastic ones when I'm working on something that's very lightweight because the metal ones tend to... Uh, way down the yarn. So I like the plastic ones for lightweight items. Um, I do have some knitting stitch markers, which I have yet to use. Um, I haven't yet to knit anything that required them, but I'm sure I will. They are just a loop, just a ring. Sometimes they have a bead on them, um, and it's meant to go over your needle as you knit. Um, as a matter of fact, the cowl I showed in my podcast I had to use one of these mini book rings for the stitch marker because none of the ones I have were big enough for the needles so another use <laughs> for the mini book markers or mini book rings so I keep this in my case uh, so I can I have them kind of separated by different little kinds so if I want to I can just grab one of them and put them in a project bag so I'll have them if I need them so that's something that I love another thing I like to have and I'm about to order some more of these because I just have a few is a retractable measuring tape um, these are great because I have lots of measuring tapes most of them I have just the, the long loose ones but I like these for a project bag because they are retractable and they stay nice and neat in this little thing they're not very expensive at all um, as a matter of fact, that's the ones I have in my cart on Amazon currently, they are more oval shaped and they come with a key ring. Um, uh, they're 60 inches or five feet, uh, and you can get 12 of them for $9.99. So that's less than a dollar a piece. And you probably can get them cheaper somewhere else. I don't know. That's just what I have pulled up right now. I just know I need some more of them. Uh, so, and I know I've seen them a lot in dollar bins and like Joann's and places like that. Uh, I may again check my Dollar Tree to see if I can find a better deal. But these are invaluable. Um, and the reason I would buy a bunch of them is so I can have one in each project bag because you never know when you're going to need one. Um, I found it's convenient to keep stitch markers, a little pair of scissors, and a retractable measuring tape in with any project you're doing knitting or crochet because nine times out of ten you're gonna have to measure something at some point you're gonna have to cut yarn at some point or mark a stitch at some point um, with crochet I have gotten in the habit of leaving a stitch marker on my last um, stitch if I'm in the middle of a part of project so that I can take the hook out and put it in a pocket um, because I used to just <laughs> pull the stitch tight on the hook and jam the hook down in the yarn, which is not always the best option because it can come loose and it get tangled in the yarn. So I found that putting a stitch marker there it works the best. Now with any needles, obviously you can't do that. I am going to order some stoppers for the end of the knitting needles, which is something I don't have currently. Now some of my projects are in my project bags. And I have the little small um, slots in the pocket and I can stick my knitting needles down in those and keep the project on. I have no had no problems with that. 
but now I have some that I don't have in a bag or I have in a smaller bag that doesn't have a pocket and so I always I really need to get something to stick on the end to keep stuff from coming off of those so there's some small things now this is something that I recently ordered but I do like these it's something I haven't you really should label your makes even if you're just making it for donations or for other gifts um, it's just a way to put your stamp on what you made there's no reason in not being proud of what you made um, I recently ordered these um, from Mountain Street Arts on Etsy and, and I really love these they're very light it's printed on uh, cork it's, it's very thin cork I like this long thin one like this with the two holes on each end because I can put it long ways on a project if I want to right like that and stitch it or I could fold it over the end of something if I wanted to like like this so it gives you the option to do it either way um, so I, I like those for labels but I have yet to use one um, I like that it's lightweight I like that I have the option to use it two different ways um, yeah so that's something I'm trying to get in the habit of is labeling my knit and crochet projects because I never have before I have um, gotten in the habit of labeling my quilts that I make and clothing that I make uh, but uh, yarn projects is a different thing so all right let's see what else do I have to talk about so the next things I'm gonna talk about are a little bit bigger things um, let's move on into hooks and needles okay so first of all I have this right here which I love um, it actually was for art pencils and things it's a Derwent that's it's meant for pencils and pens and art my son had it um, he asked for it a long time ago and then he outgrew it and he left it behind and I took it over for my hooks and needles and it's worked perfectly for that um, now it's mostly for my needles um, I mean my hooks my crochet hooks which I'm gonna show um, it has these little panels that hold my hooks um, like I've got a bunch of different things in there I do have a pair of knitting needles in there as well and some scissors so I have scissors like that but I don't like them in project bags because they're so pointy they don't have a cover they they just stab things like my fingers so this also has you could add more panels if you'd like um, this also has a zippy pouch which is where all my aluminum hooks are because I don't prefer to use the aluminum hooks I like the ones with the grippy handles I just showed um, plus they don't stay in the little these things very well because they're smaller so um but it does work great for my crochet hooks with the handles um, this I don't know I think I looked at it on Amazon one time it was about $26 um, it has this little elastic thing which I keep some packets of knitting needles in um, so I wanted to talk about these crochet hooks these are my favorite crochet hooks um, they are made by Athena's elements you can get a whole um oh goodness what did I do you can get a set for $12.99 on Amazon yes Amazon again um, but there's 12 there's from size um, B1 or 2.2 millimeter to uh, an L11 or 8 millimeter hook in it so you get 12 plus you get several darning needles um, I love these hooks I love the grip on them I love that it has the flat spot there for my thumb to go they also have longer 
uh, aluminum shafts than the typical hooks you buy with the handles, um, which is great um, when you when you have a bigger project. And I wanted to give an example. So this is the largest size. This is the eight. You can see how big the hook is. <coughs> Excuse me. Now. This is a boy hook, which is only a, a six millimeter. So what you can see on these hooks is how much longer the metal portion is than this portion. Um, it just gives you more room. So when you use these bigger hooks, you, sorry about the black on my fingers I've been painting. <laughs> um, you have thicker yarn, so you, you, you may need more room on your hook if you're doing like a bigger stitch, like a treble or something. Um, so the boy hook, you'll also notice this portion is longer and it has rounded part. Uh, it does have the flat portion, which I do like. Um, I found these on clearance at Walmart. Um, I like the feel in my hand of both of these. Now, this is a more of a brushed aluminum. I don't know if y'all are going to be able to see this. Uh, whereas the boy is more shiny. Um, let's see if I can get that to... There we go. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell that, but it's kind of hard. They both look shiny in there. But but the, the Athena Elements is a brush, which gives you a little bit... That little bit of brushed aluminum gives you a little bit um, more grip to certain yarns um and i have just loved this set i loved it so much as a matter of fact i bought another set when uh they were on flash sale um only because and now you see this only had the uh come on camera focus for me well anyway it, it, it's in it's like embossed into the side Whereas this is a printed, which will eventually wear off, depending on how much you use it. They usually will wear off. These are embossed into the handle, um, the sizing. So you'll see, on when you look at Amazon, you'll see some that are $10.99. And they're the old style with just the uh, metric um, number on it. The ones that are $12.99 a set now have the metric and U.S. Uh, numbering system on it so they have the letter and the number on it so that's why i wanted <laughs> another set um not that they've worn out or anything like that um i've loved these hooks i can't say enough about them like i said uh for the price they are awesome hooks now i know some people are fond of i think tulips and things i've never tried tulips i haven't have tried the boy they just don't sell tulip hooks in my store and when I saw these and I bought them and I loved them I didn't see any reason to try any others I love these hooks I'm always disappointed another reason for having another set is that sometimes I have the same size hook I need for two different projects and I have to go to my aluminum hooks so now I don't have to do that I can go to my other set uh, so now Knitting needles. When I first started learning to knit, I used the big long aluminum knitting needles by Boy. Um, I did not like them and I think that's one reason that I could not learn to knit because they were very cumbersome and just uh, hard to deal with for me. I know some people like the long hooks. I don't. Um, I actually learned to knit on these uh, bamboo knitting needles from Darn Good Yarn. You see how wore off the paint is on here. Um, I liked them because they were shorter. And I actually think that's why I was able to learn to knit. Um, now these, uh, the sizing is wearing off on it. That's why I don't prefer any kind of hooker needle with printed uh, numbering on it because it tends to wear off depending on how much you use it. Um, so now that I have tried, I have several different kinds of needles I tried. I definitely prefer the circular needles, no matter what I'm knitting, because it's just easier to keep things in place to me. They sit 
on the circuit. You don't have to worry about something falling off when you turn things around. I just like the circular needles. Um, I have a set of Knitter's Pride. I have a set of Haya Haya's. I have a set, not a set, just a pair, just one size. I have one size of Haya Haya's. I have, and I don't know where they're at. They're not in the package. So they must be with a project somewhere and I can't remember where. I do know that those are very pointy needles. The ends of them are very sharp um, and it can wear on your fingers but they are stainless steel um, and I have found that stainless steel when I'm crocheting it doesn't I, I've not noticed I prefer the metal hook um, I, I don't like the bamboo hooks at all or wooden hooks uh, I just it may be the tension that I have I don't like the way it moves through the yarn I prefer the aluminum hooks now for knitting, there are some yarns that I have knit with that I'm like, there's no way I can knit them on these uh, aluminum hook, l aluminum needles because they're so slippery, right? So I, I have some bamboo, uh, like when, these would be great for um, slippery yarns. Uh, so the Knitter's Pride, I did like those. They have... Their cable is not as smooth to me as uh, like the Chow Goos or the Haya Haya's. They have really smooth cables. When I say smooth cables, I mean they stay in place. They don't twist up and get all up in your business <laughs> while you're trying to knit. Especially if you have a longer cable. Um, so I have, I haven't, I bought these, these Chow Goos in particular for socks, which I haven't tried to do yet. These are very tiny needles, y'all. So, but I have some other child goos that I have in a project that I do enjoy. Uh, they're not, they are pointy as well. They're not as sharp as the Haya Haya's, but they are still pointy. Um, and their cabling is like a twisted braided cording. Hold on, y'all. Okay. <laughs> That's my deaf dog. If I don't go tell her be quiet she'll still bark because she's she can't hear anybody so anyway um so you'll notice the ones that are red they have like a plastic uh coating or whatever it is over the metal twist and in the bamboo ones you can see you can see the cabling it's like a highly high twisted stainless steel cabling it says it's made of surgical uh, grade still um, but I, it does keep the cables from twisting um, I have to say now these are some knit Knitter's Pride Bamboo which I haven't tried those uh, yet okay so let's see what else see I have some wooden crochet hooks I bought them because they're very pretty I like the ends of them, but I don't like, you see how shallow and sharp that is? It just, it's not good for picking up the, the end. I like a more hook to my, my hook, more hook to my hook. <laughs> so, um, something else I have, I got this from, I don't think she sells them anymore. I don't know, but. I got this from Becky at Funny Farm Crochet. I ordered it off of her Etsy shop. Um, I do like it. Uh, I like that it has a long shaft on the hook and it has a good hook. So there is that. Um, now I'm gonna talk about, I talked about this in my uh, podcast uh, yesterday well today's Monday you won't see this till Tuesday but this is the um the, it's an interchangeable set from blueprint which used to be craftsy it is uh still brushed brushed aluminum I think it is actually um so and I like these they don't have super pointy tips, but they are pointy enough to get in there. It's kind of flat a little bit on the end, but it has an edge to it a little bit. 
I've really enjoyed knitting with these needles. Um, now it does have, and I'm not sure if that's, it almost looks like the number is etched. And uh, you're not gonna be able to see that, but um, I think it's etched on and not printed on because you can it has a sort of texture to it that's very smooth still, it's not like it catches on the yarn or anything like that. Um, now this comes with all the way from a US 4 or 3.5 millimeter up to a US 11 or 8 millimeter size. Comes with four different size cables. Two of the cables are the same length and then the other two are different lengths. And it comes with the little tightening thing and the ends to put on the cables. And it comes with this handy little pouch which fits right into my other pouch. Um, so I keep everything all together in, in this in this thing. So I know I can reach for it and have anything I need for knitting or crochet to add to my bag. And I actually keep my hooks on that little elastic thing across there. So and something else that was in there that you may or may not have seen was a highlighter. <laughs> Why do I like highlighters? Well, if I have a printed pattern, I can highlight what I've done so far. It keeps me from getting lost. Um, and I can still see the letters the next time I go back through. I may have to use a different color or what have you. I don't tend to make things repeatedly. Um, occasionally I do, but most of the time I don't. Um, now, something else. If you have an Adobe PDF pattern, you can certainly, um, it has a highlighting tool in there in case you didn't know, and you can highlight and then save it uh, if you don't want to have to print it out. So I do that sometimes, especially when I'm traveling and I just look on my phone, I don't want to um, carry extra things. So that's always awesome. So next, I'm gonna talk about a couple of bigger things. Um, something I have, I don't know, this is maybe 10 bucks. It's a scale, um, and this is what I use when I have leftover yarn to weigh it and calculate yardage. Just uh, I also use this to measure packages for Etsy shipping. <laughs> so um, this is just a, a valuable thing, and uh, if you deal with yarn, so you know how much yarn you have left over, and if, if you're into that sort of thing, some people don't care. <laughs> I have a whole Excel file. I use Excel to keep up with all my yarn. Uh, that way I can look through there when I get ready to do a project and see what yarn I already have on hand and what I might be able to use because um, I keep up with the color, the quantity, the yardage, the weight of the yarn, um, and, and all of those things that you would look for when you're picking out yarn for a project. So that is something I find very useful to have. Something else that I have that I purchased um, last year is a ball winder because y'all <laughs> come from a very small town a small town which has a walmart that's where you buy yarn at and i had never bought yarn in the hank uh and one time i bought some offline and when i got it i was like how am i supposed to use this i tried to crochet from the hank which turned into a big old mess and it sat on my shelf forever until i got online looking around it's you know meeting more yarny people and and realize you really are supposed to wind it into a ball if you want <laughs> to use it so you don't have to have a ball winder uh, this is a knit picks ball winder i actually think i got it off of amazon though i think i paid 20 bucks for it um i've liked it it's been very useful to me for what i need um and actually hold on just a second because i forgot to get my swift right over here so this is my yarn swift uh, so you can put the hank around it it opens up like an umbrella kind of you can make it different 
uh, sizes depending on the length of your hank um, and you tighten it up and you put it on the side of the thing and you um, can wind up your hank of yarn and I love it. I love winding yarn. It's just so satisfying to me for some reason. Um, uh, but you really shouldn't wind up yarn until you get ready to do a project with it because it can stretch it and it, if it sits that way for a long time it can it can change the weight of your yarn. So according to some people. I mean I've never had that happen. Um, it's mostly natural fibers that that affects the most. Um, this is also from Knit Picks, but it was a birthday gift or a Christmas gift. I can't remember which one from my parents, so I don't remember how I don't know how much it costs. Um, you can certainly uh, I will put links down below to things so you can check them out. Um, so a couple of other things. I talked about my yarn bowls a little bit in my podcast. Uh, I love the yarn bowls. Yarn bowls are really good for like balls of yarn or cakes of smaller weight yarn because um, you can pull from the side or from the center and keep it right there and set this beside you. Uh, it's best for projects you stay, that stay at home. It's not really convenient to pack this <laughs> in your project bag. Uh, but I really love them because um, I can keep it beside me and it just looks nice. So um, this one came from Darn Good Yarn. Uh, so something else I have that I actually made is a yarn butler. Um, this is on like a Lazy Susan. I actually have a blog post about it. I'll put a link down below. I took apart one of those uh, spinning spice racks to make for the base and it's just a dowel that I sanded the top and smoothed and put a finish on it. Um, this is great for yarn cakes. Um, sometimes you gotta get it on there good. Whoa. But um, you can put it on there and as you crochet it turns or knit. Um, so I, I really love this for cakes. Um, you can actually use this for these as well as long as you can get it doesn't even have to go all the way through really um but yeah it works pretty good for that sometimes you have it because it goes around like this but it it still works pretty good for that as well and i love this when i have a big thing of yarn it's really useful because they don't fit in the yarn bowls and they don't fit they don't really want to stay in a bag as well this just I like this you have to have a flat surface to sit it on this is another thing that is for home use it's called a yarn butler and I saw them on Amazon from anywhere from uh, ten dollars to thirty dollars depending on what you get so and like I said I made mine so <laughs> um, yeah I think that is it uh, those are some of my things that I love to use for crochet and knitting um, like I said, a lot of these things are uh, applicable to both. And I forgot one thing. Um, I actually have, currently it's in this one and I need to reorganize it, but it's, this is a happy planner, but I'm using it to keep up with uh, crochet projects and crochet things. Um, I intend to put yarny samples in here and things like that. It's just something great to look at and a great, kind of like a scrapbook for your, your yarn projects. I got this one that is specifically for crochet on clearance at Hobby Lobby. Um, and I'll be swapping these out because this has actual, well, first of all, it has fun stickers that are crochet related and it has little zippered bags and it has things divided up like you would, um, want for crochet uh, plus it has a planner in it if you wanted to use it that way um, this one was a planner that I just made into a <laughs> crochet thing uh, so yeah I have one of these for my um, sewing projects as well uh, they are very much behind and I need to update them but um, it's just a great way to keep up with the things that you make. Uh, taking pictures is great as well, but this is just something more tangible 
which I like. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's everything. This is wind up being longer than I thought it was going to be. But um, that is, those are some of my favorite things to use for crochet and knitting. Uh, like I said, I am new to knitting, so there's some things that I still, I do want a knitting gauge, which is good for crochet as well. Um, which you can just use a ruler for it, but I, having the little square, I found one on Amazon. It's about $9, I think. It has the open square and it has all the holes for knitting needles to gauge them. And then it has a little separate piece that's specifically for crochet hooks to uh, know the gauge of those. So that's something I'm looking into because, um, that's something I would need and some of the stoppers for the ends of my knitting needles I feel some things I need those for uh, like I said if I'm using one of my project bags with the pockets I can just stick them down in there and it works great um, so yeah what are y'all okay so now y'all can tell me down in the comments what are your favorite things to use for knitting or crochet um, maybe you have some fantastic thing that you use that uh, I don't know about or others don't know about and they might want to know about so I'd love for you to share that with me in the comments um, if you have any questions about anything I showed I'm gonna try to put all the links down below uh, just uh, shoot me an email um, or ask me in the comments either one works um, if you like this video give it a thumbs up think about subscribing um, and I will see y'all later in the week bye